Hello and welcome back to the Winnie Agenda's coverage of Anikoria, Lair of the Behemoths, Premier Draft. My name is Jesse Marshall, and <laughs> so we went with the white-black version of the deck, and we've ended up drawing both of the red sources. Don't know why I left that Spell Eater Wolverine in. Hmm, might need to fix the deck up after this, but look, uh, we'll keep this one. We've got the Bastion of Remembrance. There are quite a few white sources in the deck, so hopefully we draw on before too long. Generals and Forcer is not necessarily one you want to be playing on turn two anyway. Um, and yeah, we can play Bastion of Remembrance and Spell Eater Wolverine, and we do want to be getting the Bastion out as early in the game as we possibly can. So we'll stick with that. Some very interesting sleeves on the other side of the board. Um, Whisper Squad, out you go. Now we might actually delay playing the Bastion just to make sure we can get the Whisper Squad chain happening. Uh, depending on what goes on here. Okay. Um, I think it's less likely, given the colors our opponent is playing, that they are going to destroy our Whisper Squad this turn. Um, so let's just get a bit of power on the board, especially since we're on the play and they've got an ominous seize, which is ominous from a lo uh, long game perspective, uh, particularly if they have a way to give the Kraken flying. Less ominous if they don't. But we c can presume, I think, in a blue-white deck that there'll be a, a Heron or something else to lift the Kraken into the air over the top of our many tiny little soldiers. So I think the more damage that we can get in early in the game, the better. Uh, so they haven't got um, neutralized mana, um, so I'm just going to play the Bastion of Remembrance because I don't want to walk into an Essence Scatter with Grim Dancer. I'd much rather play that when they're tapped out. And I think it's now getting to the point for them where, given we've got the Heartless Act, um, they might be a little far behind. Okay. Um, we can both fetch a Whisper Squad and play this Whisper Squad. Which is kind of cool. So we'll end turn there. We'll only fetch the Whisper Squad if we don't need to kill something with Heartless Act. Although we do need to watch out for the escape protocol, obviously, when we're using our removal spells. Uh, cool. Well, Patagia Tiger is one that we can deal with. Kind of looks a lot like the creature on this card, doesn't it? I think it might actually be. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that, Patagia Tiger, but you were destroyed flavorfully by a Heartless Act. Um, yeah, so, so much for all those white sources that we're apparently running, um, but... In any event, we get to do a little bit of damage. Um, and I guess we might as well just jam this out there. Uh, we'll go with Life Link Menace. Sounds good. Cool. GG. Well, that's one game down. We'll um, possibly reevaluate whether we want to play that Spell Eater Wolverine still, given that we're only playing two red sources, both of which we drew. the deck construction option appears. Oh, what's this? Is that a mythic? Spawn of Mayhem. Not the most overwhelmingly exciting mythic of all time. Yes, so let's cut this Spell Eater Wolverine and um, put in another black or white card. Uh, could be Fighters 1, could be Snare Tactician. Um, we do have a fair few humans and a fair few non-humans. So Fighters 1 is not too bad. I probably prefer Unexpected Fangs though, I think. Um, although Fighters 1, I think, is more likely to save something like a Grim Dancer, which can be quite important anyway. But yeah, the fact that the, the bonuses from Unexpected Fangs hang around, particularly Lifelink, can be quite good. Um, but I think we're less likely to want to invest in one particular creature 
with the unexpected fangs, so Fighters One's probably better in this sort of deck. Um, that being said, we have now gone down to 13 creatures, which I do not love, particularly when a lot of them are fodder. Um, we've only got Call of the Death Dweller to recur. We've got General's Enforcer to make extras. Mm. Maybe we don't really need that so much as we need another creature. Well, the only options are Spell Eater Wolverine, or uh, oh, sorry, one of the red creatures, or the Snare Tactician. I think maybe Cloud Pierce is better than Spell Eater Wolverine, given that we can go fetch it with the Fiend Artisan as well, and it just is a bit beefier, and it has reach. I think it's probably better than playing the Snare Tactician. Um, yeah, let's go with that. All right, game two. I'm still really torn. I'd uh, be interested to know what people think in the comments, actually, on that deck construction question about the the red versus the white here. We ended up with, you know, basically, I think even, I think it evens out pretty much between the um, slightly better cheap white removal, given the fact we've got pacifism and divine arrow versus the fire prophecy on the red side. But the fact that we've got the Luca in red, but then we've got General's Enforcer for value in white, which obviously isn't as good, but I think it does give something back to the value question. Um, yeah, see how it plays out. If we feel like we're lacking in fatties, um, or that you know our games are often working out that we're getting Whisper Squads, which could gum up the board to allow us to go off with Luca, then yeah, maybe maybe we do bring Luca back in. So this hand's looking pretty sweet. We've got all our colors um, and we can get our four Whisper Squads out pretty early in all likelihood, as well as having a mutual destruction to take advantage of them. Hmm. Hmm. I think, do we play the Bloodfell Caves? Um, no, I think we'll just play the Whisper Squad here and then Whisper Squad turn two and then hopefully we can Farfinder or Grim Dads to turn three, but if we can't, it's kind of no big deal. We can just Whisper Squad, uh, use Whisper Squad's ability instead. All right. Lord Steelix has a very similar deck to what we've brought along. Um, so we'll get rid of that General's Enforcer before Lord Steelix has an opportunity to do us too much damage with it. But this time we're going to just use Whisper Squad's ability. So no attacks, land the turn. Uh, and then next turn... The other option there was to play the Bloodfell Caves and play the second Whisper Squad. Maybe that was better, um, but if we get Suffocating Fumes, it is pretty miserable at that point. Um, and pass to Attackers. But our mana is a little awkward. Oh, no attacks. Okay, interesting. Um, well... Although, no, nah, I'm too I'm too scared of suffocating fumes. I'm just going to play this. Um, since our opponent didn't attack last turn, we're under no pressure, and we have this mutual destruction to deal with the enforcer, and they missed a land drop last turn, so I'm not too fast. We can also play Farfinder next turn, grab a swamp, and then play mutual destruction. So... I think we just want to get this Bastion down and start chipping away at their life total as soon as possible. Okay. Well, well, well. We'll just take the beats here because we are going to be regaining a little bit of life from our Bastion throughout the game. So I think we can probably take a beat for now. Uh, so let's make sure that we 
play the Farfinder, grab the Swamp, because killing either the King Caesar or the General's Enforcer is going to be good this turn. I think we'll kill the Enforcer just for the long game. Um, so we'll make sure we get in there first, though. Uh, we'll play this. We're going to go to combat, all attack. And then we'll mutual destruction. Um, yeah, I'm kind of happy to let King Caesar just run around being a giant dork for a while. Because over time, if our opponent does keep attacking with it, then we can either take it or block. Um, now that it's got lifelink, is a little bit more annoying. Because it kind of harms our let's chip away at their life total strategy. Lifelink's very good in this format. Okay, well, that works out pretty well. Uh, so we'll blood curdle King Caesar. Put a menace counter on Farfinder. Uh, play Whisper Squad and then just get in there with Farfinder. I think, or we could attack with a team actually. Yeah, I'm pretty happy to attack with the team. I think we just want to get as much damage in as quickly as possible now. And we'll have Groom Dancer next turn. Which in black white, I think probably has access to the most removal um, of all the colors, so we're expecting to see a little bit of removal from our opponent like that. Um, but if we can get the Grim Dancer to stick on the board, that will be excellent. Okay. Well, we don't get to go and fetch Whisper Squad number four, but we do get to play Grim Dancer, give it, I'm going to do this post combat, but I just cannot be bothered. Um, give it lifelink and menace and then get in there with the whisper squads and kill this duskfang mentor hopefully i mean they could have a trick let's see nope cool so unfortunately that three life that they gained from the king caesar does put us in a little bit of an awkward spot because we're off the top now and well yeah okay let's just get in there they have missed a lot of land drops here and speaking of us being in an awkward spot they are definitely in an awkward spot um we'll just play out the cloud piercer we don't want to be going more all in on this grim dancer than we already are because if they play a fourth land and then were to um Blood Curdle the Groom Dancer. After we'd Cloud Piercer mutated onto it, that would be pretty miserable. We also didn't want to hold back the Cloud Piercer just to um, try and discard a land, loot away a land next turn. Um, I think getting it on the board is another threat, given the state of the game was pretty important since they are mana screwed, but will recover at some point in the next couple of turns, presumably. Tempo is quite important. Okay, a lifelinker is pretty annoying. So there's that land that we could have gotten rid of. But in any event, let's get in with these two since we've got Menace here um, and we don't actually trade if they block the Cloud Piercer. So we've got a five. Um, they could have a Mutator to get multiple Cubs, which would be pretty frustrating. We're going to hold on to this because I think, oh we no, we took out the Cathartic Reunion because we took out most of our red cards. Um, but we do get to get another Whisper Squad at least. Okay, so they get to go up to eight. Yeah, no blocks. If we had a way to sacrifice, that would be awesome because we could deny the lifelink, but no Bushmeat Poacher unfortunately. Uh, pass to damage.
Hmm, interesting. I wonder what they've got. We have this other Whisper Squad anyway. Um, and go to our turn. Alright, unfortunate, but hopefully we can outpace that Cub Warden. It's going to get pretty awkward if they draw a Mutator. Presumably they're going to kill either or both, one or both of our big creatures. Okay, so the Cub Warden's getting Menace, but they're going to one. Hmm, this is very, very interesting. Will they attack? Well, they kind of have to, because unless they can kill the Grim Dancer here. Which again, you know, white, black, the colors of removal. You know, is it pacifism, divine arrow, more blood kernels, more dead weights. Let alone all the uncommon removal. Swallow hole, heartless act. Yeah, I think this is probably the the most number highest number of turns that I've had a Grim Dancer stick around in this format. <laughs> this Bastion of Remembrance with the kind of full bleed look. It's very nice looking. One of my favorite cards in the format. Um, as it's developed, I just it gives you a, a fair amount of inevitability. Like obviously it's not nothing's guaranteed. You're not guaranteed to win just from having this, but it certainly helps. Um okay, so they're gonna gain three and they're gonna take at least four, because if they double block the groom dancer, then oh we'll just play this. Great. GG. Uh, she's an artifact, yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, uh, so Mythos of Snapdax worked out well. We would have won anyway from attacking, but, you know, it's nice to play your rares when you draw them. So that takes us to two wins, no losses. We'll be back shortly with another video of the rest of the draft. Hope you enjoyed. I've been Jesse Marshall for The Winning Agenda. Cheers.